The independent review of JISC was carried out for a number of reasons. Higher education in this country is going through a real period of turbulence and clearly an organisation like JISC which is there to support and advance the sector has to review why it's there, what it's doing. So that is one reason. Secondly, JISC has been in existence for some 15 years now and it was timely to look at the organisation. Uh, it's about five years or so since there was last a root branch review, so time to look anyway. So I suppose length of time in which the organisation has been in existence, coupled with the environmental pressures, one of which is technological, but I would argue that the key ones are perhaps political and financial. And higher education in 2015 is going to look very different from the way it looks now, so just has to make sure it's fit for purpose in that context. So those are really the key reasons why the review was carried out when it was carried out. I think there are a number of ways in which this review and its recommendation give JISC a number of uh, opportunities to carry out uh, a, its own root and branch review and to look forward in terms of what it should be doing for the sector. One of the recommendations obviously relates to the question of what JISC is as a legal entity and how it's governed and what it should be doing in consequence. And I actually think that the suggestion that JIST becomes an entity in its own right is actually very important because it will, as it will, liberate the organisation to enable it to work more closely with the sector, to respond to the sector and to be capable of uh, carrying out what the sector really needs and wants. Now in that context clearly there are a number of issues, one of which is the business model that should be adopted. But we're looking amongst others at a kind of at least part subscription model where the organisations, the universities, the colleges and so on pay a subscription of some kind in return for which they get the services they want. Now clearly that will encourage even more dialogue between the sector and JISC as to what the sector wants and needs. So I think uh, that is one of the ways in which um, JISC has opportunities. I think another way is the relationship between JISC and the other companies that it has in the past had to set up because of the kind of organisation that JISC was. Mm -hmm. So um, I think those are two areas, the structure of JISC and its relationship with the sector. Now you could argue that there's a downside to that in terms of what does the sector want. The issue is what is the sector, it's actually a sector of sectors. But I do think given the way in which JISC already works as a very responsive organisation, it will be able to cope with the different needs of different parts of the sectors, provided we get the governance model not right in terms of the representative uh, body that will oversee the work of JISC and the consultation process that in future uh, devises and implements the, uh, the different programmes that JISC has been so well renowned for. Well until 2009 I was Principal of University College Plymouth St Mark and St John and I was also Chair of one of the mission groups, so-called mission groups and representative bodies, Guild HE. And it was clear to me both as Principal at Mar John and as uh, Chair of Guild HE that there were a number of things that JISC provides and which the sector very much appreciates and will go on appreciating. I think ultimately there are three things or three types of things that JISC provides that the sector very much wants to see kept and developed. The first is clearly infrastructure, whether it's Janet or the services that are provided above uh, the basic track, Janet. Um, and um, those have to continue to be high level, world beating, um, and have the capacity to provide for the kind of quality research learning and teaching and business and community engagement that is such such a fundamental part of what higher education institutions do. So I think that's absolutely important. So the infrastructure, innovation has to continue to be such a fundamental part of, of JISC's work. If we don't innovate, we die as a sector. Higher education in this country is renowned for its innovation. A lot of that innovation, whether it's research or learning and teaching, goes on because of, in my view, because of the work that JISC has done. Um, and done, and this is my third point, and done not just for 
the Russell Group end of the sector. It's done for all the sector. And I think JISC has been very good and needs to go on being very good at recognising the fact that the sector, UK higher education and indeed further education, is a very diverse sector and that one size doesn't fit all when you're talking about innovation and next generation support for an innovation in learning, teaching, research and business and community engagement.